scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Revelation starts with John the Beloved. Do you know who John was? John was not just an apostle. He was called the Beloved. That means if you arrange all the disciples according to their, permit me to use the word, according to their spiritual stratification, the first will not be Peter. The first will be John. The beloved. There abided these three. Faith, Peter, hope, James, love, John, the greatest. You see that now? And John was banished in an isle called Patmos for the sake of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And while he was there, he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. That, that's another discussion there. Because there are things you cannot see. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this. There are levels in the spirit where until you rise in the spirit, you cannot see. You cannot know. So he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard first, started with his hearing. I heard this and that and that. And then eventually he saw the church, the lamb stands. And then he received the dimension of revelation to the seven churches that were in Asia Minor. Prophetically, the Catholic church, the complete church. Because every one of those churches represented a dimension in the body that God was adjusting, commending and correcting. Are we together? Having exhausted that, then he was open to another dimension of worship in heaven. Are we together? And to think that that was all, John was being told by this revelation that John, at this plane that you stand now, there is nothing to see again. Everything has been seen and every instruction has been received. Notice, John was never shown things that will happen. From that plane, he only saw things that were and things that are. That was it. Then chapter 4 comes and he says, Come up hither and let's go to the future. Let me show you the things that must happen shortly. And John rolls to the future. There are realms that when you stand there, you will see what has happened and what is happening. But you may never see what God is up to. You can be a Christian. You can still be called. I learned very early in life and in ministry. That as wonderful as fame is, it can be dangerous. That as wonderful as revelation and leadership is. Let me tell you this. If you ever assume a pioneer status in the spirit you have to be extra careful pioneers are usually the ones who hardly finish read the bible there are few pioneers that finished moses leads the people and never gets into the promised land himself are you seeing that now it's very important It's easy to follow a move that was not introduced by you. It's easy to follow on. 
yours is just to observe template and to conform to it by the spirit the nation of israel did not have to climb the mountain to experience god they just needed to look at the face of the one who already went what was in the mountain was now on the face of a man so instead of climbing up the mountain they just kept looking at moses and they would have the same experience but it was up to moses to know the next thing that god would be doing are we together now as powerful as moses was you can see the extent of his trial and error they will wait behind and wait for him to go and fish out the new move then all of them will come and follow it was because of this moses was instructed to speak to the rock and in anger he struck the rock and because of that he said no 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 no. this was not my program you've corrupted it you cannot enter canaan pioneering the move of god is very dangerous many people like the honor that follows this and that to say oh we are the ones that started this dimension but you see the thing about it is that because you are at that level you will feel indebted to that level you will be emotionally connected to that move you cannot leave it to the next level are we together now yes that you were the first to be to open up a dimension of god to a territory it's like you are the first to start producing this and now when you are aware that this is no longer in use if everybody leaves it you will not want to leave it too because of that relationship that's how it is even with spiritual things there are dimensions that you can be so emotionally connected to because of the experiences that surround that dimension and when another move of God starts coming you will prefer that the move comes to meet you there but not to leave that level and to rise higher that's why i said it is dangerous to pioneer spiritual things it's a noble cause and it's a noble task but the burden on it it will only take the spirit of the living god to help you the second reason why it is dangerous or by dangerous i don't mean it is not advantageous that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that you are in a very vulnerable position the second is that because of the charisma and the ego are we together and the sense of achievement that surrounds that level the moment you and any other move that is happening within that dispensation that you don't seem to be involved in you can preach that it is error or it is satanic or it is demonic because you are used to being the starter you are not used to following you are used to starting moves understand what i'm saying you know you see that if you have not done anything in god tonight's teaching may not really bless you john was the first of his kind to introduce this dimension of the prophetic a very strange prophet the bible says of all the prophets none was as great as john so john is in the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey a strange dimension of revelation when jesus comes john baptizes jesus and then he's happy that he's baptized jesus even john said i may decrease i'm not sure he understood what he was saying now eventually the disciples of john had to start living to join something that was a move john was never in one of jesus's crusades they didn't hang him the next day they didn't lock him the next day john was alive he was there he never saw the need because he believed that the the emotional connect and the ego of pioneering things did not allow him to go there notice all the people that seemed to be pioneers were those who were offended with jesus the scribes and the pharisees we are the sanhedrin council what are you doing jesus all the followers were excited what is the new thing let us join if it's bread we eat if it's the mountain we climb but the scribe said not so this is not how we have been doing it including john follow me very carefully so john is hearing of the things jesus is doing and a few disciples who are loyal to him too 
come back look at the pain in john's heart the people he had raised i don't know what john thought he would become but his honor was already there for his assignment completed but john probably believed that he would continue to run that ministry the same way jesus was running it to like a parallel whatever it is and it seemed as though jesus did not have regard for john because we never see jesus making any mention of john go and greet john or oh, john just to tell you your boy is still here the move continues and the fame of jesus is growing john is threatened the scribes are threatened the roman government threatened everything every day was an episode of mighty things listen very carefully follow me i want to show you something powerful mm. one day john gets himself in trouble and he's behind bars about to be beheaded and he sends in offense listen this is the current move fighting the next move go and confirm are you the one that we should be waiting for are you the messiah or is there another it was a sarcastic statement it was not a question that required an answer john was not ignorant he was a prophet and when jesus had it jesus said i know what the problem is it's a weakness in men it's a weakness in pioneers it's a weakness in those who are trusted to pioneer certain moves listen what i'm teaching you is very deep you will listen to one message some years to come and you will cry when god sent you to a region where they do not know one tenth of the truths that god has taught you and for many years you become a celebrity and a mighty man and god begins to do mighty things in and through you and then one day you will hear and see of things that you were not involved with and you will see. this is the challenge oh, let me not go ahead of myself this is one of the major challenges with all due respect of fathers and senior colleagues in ministry because of the mighty things that god did in and through them and the dimensions that were introduced sincerely speaking not out of wickedness or whatever they were so emotionally connected to starting things that they believe that if god is ever to do anything it is impossible for them to not start it so when they hear that mighty things are happening and they don't seem to be involved they think it to their honor whereas john was not there when jesus commended him as the greatest prophet in other words as far as this move is concerned receive your crown. you have done a great job but let the program of god continue and if you are interested you will have to humble yourself and join that move provided you are not pioneering it I will show you those who got it right in the bible one of them was mary no woman as a virgin had ever gotten pregnant it was a new dimension now mary had a right to sit down and say my son jesus my this my that but when she discerned there was a new move she followed them to the upper room and waited quietly the mother of jesus among the 120 who would receive the holy ghost was it not the before some of them were born she had been relating with the holy ghost it was the holy ghost that got her pregnant and now she's coming to receive him in another dimension with humility you understand what i will teach you you will never miss any move of god if you don't get it there are moves that will leave you you will stand in shock it's not backsliding you will just say lord when did this cloud pass me Mary got it right. John did not. John was offended. I will show you that even Jesus got it right. He knew that purpose was not just to come and remain on earth. He knew the timing. And even in advance, he began to tell them, I am not afraid of handing over. Because it is in handing over that my honor is multiplied. Listen. 
so jesus is preparing the people watch this and then he uses a very dangerous statement it is expedient that i go ah they said no you must remain here you will be king we ate bread we like you remain we like this kind of ministry but he was saying no 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 i'm even coming to i'm a bridge between the old and the new you must be so desperate for god that the position you occupy in the things of god should not matter you must be so desperate for the things of god like mary you can give birth to jesus and still join to wait she was not the one leading praise and worship in the upper room if mary comes and sits in koinonia now i will give her the mic i will just give her and sit down what does it like to carry the word of god bodily for nine months mary talk to us let's learn i will hand over the ministry to mary there was no mention of her speaking imagine mary was there among the 120 so peter is praying remember jesus told us that in 10 more days the holy ghost will come and mary is watching them you know the level of humility it takes to be a mighty mover in a dimension sustain the humility to stand back there is an obsession in men to be known there is an obsession in men to be famous it's a weakness in men please listen back to our story so john is offended and makes a sarcastic statement go and ask jesus whether he's the messiah the same said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world now said go and verify jesus we are not sure again do you know what that message would have done to the disciples they would have said if prophet john is now doubting jesus it means we have to be careful it was a sarcastic way of saying be careful with that meeting be careful with that move so when jesus had it he laughed he said go and the blind see this and that and the gospel is preached he said blessed is he that is not offended in me then the disciples were now at the center stage and one day listen carefully they heard that there were other people who were not part of their camp there was there were some powerful miracles happening somewhere and the disciples said jesus what is going on here and jesus laughed he said you guys want to make the mistake of john whoever is not against us whoever is not against us is for us they were so happy there was a time the the remember the mother of james and john she wanted to come and see him the disciples stopped and said what is it we're in a move we're enjoying you see why they were angry when jesus said he was going they said well, what is all this one now so what is our own take on this you have created trouble for us and now you want to leave you are not going anywhere and jesus said no it is expedient that i go i'm going because you will now be on the center stage with the holy spirit and they refused jesus was secured enough to finish his assignment and to step back to say spirit of the living god these are the ones that represent the next move use them mightily i will still be glorified i'm digressing to make this statement so that you will understand i have seen a lot of people who started great things in the body and today they are not benefactors of the next move because their attachment and their ego will not give them the flexibility to blend into what god was doing and so because they are they are being inert in the next move of god will have to require an explanation so they will fabricate an explanation that communicates error and they'll say forget about those people that's one of the reasons why so many people have insulted the prophetic today i know that the prophetic has its own errors i know if the prophetic has its own imbalances but many people because the dealings of god at that time did not open up to this dimension there are people for instance who will see what just happened here and say no way god does not move like this this is nonsense just because god did not move 
the way he was moving before does not mean he's not the one moving the flexibility to discern the next move of God and that if you are interested you open up your heart and say Lord I must not pioneer that move to join what you are doing if it is God and it brings glory to you I'm on my way going it's a very difficult thing difficult thing if you are a follower it's okay but if you are one who moves why will you see Mary among the 120 sitting quietly I have looked for certain names who were once great names in the body in as much as the move of the spirit within their time was there and those names are almost silent and there has been no interest to find out what else is God doing and sometimes they have begun to teach that look anything that is outside the scope of what we know is nonsense that is a dangerous thing that is the mistake of John John would have followed Jesus quietly and he would have died honorably there would have been no reason for being beheaded in every crusade Jesus would have given him honor even the scribes were given honor as terrible where they never sat outside they sat inside they hated him but at least they followed they followed Nicodemus came one day and said Jesus let me tell you we are not stupid we know we know we see what you are doing we see the formation of a new move we know that you are a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him except God be with him I'm taking our time to establish this before we begin to build I just felt it strongly in my spirit to tell us do you know why I'm saying this Zaria hear me you are a privileged place this is a place that God has put his hand very strongly and many people from here listen God is distributing people from this city across several places and you see when you get to some of those regions you will be surprised that as cheap as some of these revelations we trivialize are you will find out that some of those regions are in utter scarcity and you will be so relevant within a period and if you do not sustain the discernment to know what next when people come into that dimension and you don't know how to come up here you will be in big trouble you will become the biggest enemy to the next move of God Alexander the way was a mighty mighty healing evangelist listen carefully he created what we call Zion the Zion city are we together now when you know then they didn't have internet and communication was not strong so you couldn't know what was happening in, in another part of the world the way was doing a mighty mighty work until a strange woman later appeared called maria woodward eater listen when maria woodward eater appeared she introduced a dimension of the move of god that they call presence evangelism that was when people would fall down like this and literally freeze in the same position for hours having heavenly encounters and she was a woman until then the way was not aware that something was happening at the other side of the world the day alexander the way heard it history has it this is confirmed alexander the way told everybody that this woman number one as a woman number two this dimension was occultism and he used his influence to fight that woman her first husband joined that conviction and fought her till he died the current move of god usually will be the biggest challenge to the next move of god the same way the law was the biggest challenge to the grace of God remember that the Sanhedrin council started by the impartation of the spirit 
of Moses upon 70 elders. That's how it started. Eventually, it had now become a religious place. And when Jesus came, they could not even identify him. So John had exhausted all his revelation within a dimension he had seen. Had John returned back, John would never believe that there were higher dimensions. But then the angel told him, come up hither. Please prophesy to somebody, say, come up hither. Come up hither. And I will show you the things that must happen. I call what I just explained to you the tragedy of complacency that comes with a successful move of God. It is a complacency. It is, it is, it is weaved in men. It is a weakness in men. That when, when you are successful in executing God's desire for a season, usually the impetus to inquire lord can there be more will not be there because there are obvious evidences nobody can come and say you are not anointed nobody can say you are not intelligent the records are there to show that you are anointed the records are there to show you have built a great church the records are there to show you are mighty let me give you an instance in nigeria today the pattern of church growth is that there usually will be a central church like a headquarters is that true and then you will now have branches all together connected do you know that was not how it was before there was a move of god that brought that formation do you know what the next move is because many young people in our generation now every dimension you climb has the strategy for the move of god i'm not saying that is wrong you understand what i'm saying so the way god revealed to our fathers most of them you will find out that there is a central headquarters is that true that coordinates everything then there are branches around the world it was never like that in the history of nigeria in fact before that time the strategy was to have a small church and be dangerously anointed and just hide there like a seer and your job is to part and release people that was the strategy men like apostle babalola it was after his death that csc expanded like that the, the apostolic church and, and all of that when you read about them most of the great pioneers of the churches we have today especially around the west when they were the way they were they were small look at redeem for instance the founder they had not received the blueprint of establishment and expansion like that our fathers stayed with god and god said for this move that i am bringing this is the strategy I am revealing. Are you seeing that now? But as wonderful as that is, it can be dangerous for someone in our generation to just mechanically begin to envisage. Because in the next 20 years, technology has taught us that you must be at the cutting edge of evolution. The same way it is scientifically, that's the same way it is spiritually. So if in our generation, your dream is to have branches in every state, you are already at the verge of missing something serious because that is not the pattern that will come. We must be able to stay and say, Lord, what is the pattern? As at the time that move started, there was no internet to agree. So the advantage of connectivity was not there. Do you know what the move of God will be now that internet is an advantage? That a man can sit in his room and be talking to the whole world is dangerous to be where God was is dangerous to be where God was he said holy holy is the Lord God Almighty who was who is and who is to come it's a dangerous thing to be where God was it's a dangerous thing to be involved in what God was doing. You have to posture yourself to be relevant in what God is doing and what he's about to do. Your current level, at your current spiritual level, you can only see what God is doing. That's the limit. If you want to see the future, you must come up either. 
from revelations one to three there was nothing futuristic it was a revelation of things that were and the things that are the moment he wanted to see the next program of god he was asked to rise to a higher dimension if you're with me say amen so we must trust god for grace to conquer what i call the tragedy of complacency please be careful when you are the greatest of your kind within a territory pray more fast more because the rest are waiting for you to move and if you don't move just like you they will stay and can i tell you something usually when the move of god comes all the followers are just faster because there is no embarrassment like the disciples of john it is usually you you see which is also another reason why listen men of god we must teach as though there is more in god it is dangerous that you are teaching doctrines doctrines will not change they are exact spiritual precepts given to the saints but when you are studying the life the character of god you must create a lot of flexibility and i'm the position of a student even before your members so that there is no embarrassment if and when you have to adjust to the things that god is doing if you're with me say amen mm. an arrival mentality is a dangerous mentality for a christian for a man of god an arrival mentality I've seen miracles I've seen signs I've seen wonders I've seen the move of God but could that could could it be that there's more in God than you've not seen now I'm going to make a very serious statement I want you to listen and Sean names is a father of faith that has gone to be with the Lord a respected voice in the body a great I call him great grandfather now Papa E. Hagen when you read Hagen's books and you see a lot of things that Hagen wrote you will know that Hagen was absolutely at the cutting edge of what God was doing at his time but when you read Papa Hagen's books with the lens of what God is doing now you will find a lot of gaps and the need for improvement which is proof he succeeded it's not proof that he's weak it's proof that he succeeded he left us a template a ladder to build upon it was Papa Hagen that wrote things like the anointing of the spirit the only medium that the anointing can move upon is a prayer cloth and he's right because he saw it in the Bible but now we know that that is not absolutely true it was a dimension of truth that was seen based on him the anointing of the spirit is as limitless as God himself are you getting what I'm saying now it's very important let me tell you this I have seen visions of the coming move of God and I have been stretched myself because of the dimension of the things that will happen those dimensions will be fought tooth and nail when I say tooth and nail, there are dimensions that even as a strong believer, you will need grace from God. You will need to look well from the lens of scripture. Is the reason why God is grounding us on the word now. So that when that dimension comes, the, your dexterity in the word will make you be able. <laughs> Listen to what I'm telling you. There are things we have not yet seen on earth that must happen before Christ comes. The Bible records it. There are dimensions we have only spoken about. The prophet said it. If as I'm standing here right now, you just see this mic on the table and I'm out, I'm gone. By this night, an internet is going to say finally exposed the voodoo power even from this example some of you are already afraid for me apostle don't do it oh you see let me tell you this yet we read in the bible that the spirit took philip 
and told him to join the chariot of a man not in a vision a man dematerialized entered the realm of the spirit reformed back and stayed on a chariot and the eunuch was afraid he didn't run away he told Nathaniel you will see greater things than this he told Nathaniel that you will see heavens opened and the angels ascending and descending upon the son of man let me tell you this the miracles that have stretched us now and the dimensions of the power and the word of God will be child's play compared to the things that God has because the pride of men and this cosmos there must be the introduction of something so divine and powerful to bring the kings to their knees this current level cannot bring the kings to their knees again you can what you call now the move of God go to Dubai go to Singapore go to the US and challenge them they will look at you and say stupid this is what you came to tell me let me tell you the truth we are not going to win the world just by charity I believe in charity don't get me wrong but right now the church is beginning to be so afraid they don't have any other superior result so they just have to blend to feed the poor so that that's the only condition to be accredited by non-christian organizations that the, the world's interpretation of the church's relevance is feeding the poor and hungry and i don't have a problem with it but they are reducing us so everybody's now saying look it looks like the court the in thing now if you don't want to be criticized quietly find orphans or find widows buy sewing machine and color or something just share and snap and the world will say well done this is what you the colder you are the more the world says well done we are now seeing what you are doing there are tv programs today that will not air koinonia like this with what happened no way no way with the move of god like this someone shouting <clears throat> You are creating controversy that will make the regulatory agencies get into trouble. Like I said, if you're a new believer tonight, you will need extra grace from God. That's why I, I pre-warned you already ahead of time. We need something more than what we have now to bring the arrogance of the kings of the earth. Let me tell you, they have prosperity they have health do you know that most of what we claim the power of god does we don't even have it well mention three or four things the only thing that the church now in as much as we know can boast of one salvation two the personal communion of the holy spirit three the peace that surpasses all understanding but as far as anything earthly is concerned and the things i just mentioned are the things we don't emphasize most of the things we emphasize are the things we cannot defend so we talk a lot about the miraculous and while we are making all that noise someone in dubai has discovered a way of just making what we will do as a miracle cheap and they will soon make it easy and if that happens we are going to be in trouble because a day will come on a crusade ground just sharing a fence will be a free medical outreach with sophisticated machines and those who are not healed in our meetings will just enter there quickly and in five minutes they are giving when that happens i'm not being sarcastic when that happens let me tell you something will go wrong because one day the government can shut down a church and say we have examined and we cannot see your relevance The church is more than a charity organization it is our fear and our inability to rise higher we have a, remember there was a time where the healing ministry the prophetic and all these things was cast on earth the world had not caught up with that dimension so if you had it you could shine but not now not now put a poster and put a wheelchair up nobody could dare question a miracle before but right now someone will come in that crusade ground you will think he came to be blessed he's videotaping everything from your face to the person on the wheelchair they will go and examine the person and say was that leg going to work anyway or was it your prayer that made it work if i have malaria and i've started taking anti-malaria 
and I'm on day four and you pray for me was I going to be healed anyway or was it the prayer that brought it this is the judgmental spirit that our generation has in the days of our fathers nobody will ask that question it will be on paper mighty things are happening and a crowd now mighty things draw criticism our generation let me tell you this ask some of our parents who are here there were many things that they knew that was not the best but they had an unflinching loyalty for the voices in their time nobody would dare stand up and question a man of god if they were not satisfied they would leave him and go home and pray for him remember that talk of pray for him right now a man can be preaching and a young man can stand up and say sir what you are saying no and create a debate there welcome to a new level of living where if we don't get the strategy for now we will be in trouble are we together thank God for prosperity but of the Forbes hundred richest people I'm not sure there are up to ten of them who are tongue so using physical wealth to bring the world to his knees is almost a failed project because there are some of these people who have given 95 percent of their wealth i'm not aware of any believer who has done that now i may be wrong but i'm not aware it means he must take something more than money if it's education the best institutes in the whole world are not christian institutes my brothers and my sisters let me tell you whether it's research whether it's medicine whether it's whatever we have to be honest if it's in the term in terms of well-meaning uh, civilization and all of that go to hedonistic nation that have no for god and look at level of development infrastructure you look at all of these things many of them are already the future of africa in the next 30 years now what then will bring the kings of today's world to their knees when moses went with a rod to meet pharaoh pharaoh said nonsense you left the wilderness to come and show me a rod to become a snake i am pharaoh you show me more we can sing songs and fall down in the church congratulations but let me tell you we need to take something out that can bring the kings to their knees in Babylon Babylon was a place of wizardry there was something that happened with Daniel there was something that happened with Shadrach Meshach and Abednego that made the king to testify the king passed a decree unanimously that nobody should bow to any other God again except the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego Are we blessed? We must receive grace to not ever believe that what we have seen is all there is. We must obtain grace. Please hear me. If you have history here, thank God for the wonderful things. But you must obtain grace. The second point on what I want to talk about tonight, I'm just charging your mind. The first I, I put it as the tragedy of complacency and arrival mentality the second is a condition that must be needed and met in a life if you will ever attract the hand of God that will take you to a higher dimension is called hunger and thirst It's not enough to be ready to move to another level. Hunger and thirst are accurate measures of your spiritual health. The same way when a patient is sick, one of the symptoms in most cases is that you lose appetite. When you lose appetite, spiritually something is wrong. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness. It says that they will be filled. Hunger and thirst. John chapter 7 and verse 37. Let's read it very quickly. Boy, I 
time is gone john 7 and verse 37 look up please in the last day the great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink if you do not thirst you can stay with what i've given with all the days but in this new day i have been visiting you but on this last day if you are still thirsty come listen listen and understand what he's saying remember that it was not the first day the last day they had benefited from all the other days but in the last day he said if any man thirst let him come you have enjoyed the move of god before you have seen the hand of god before you have seen the grace of god before you have seen the sick healed before and god is saying in 2019 if there is any man that still thirsts, come if there is any church that is still thirsty come koinonia if you still believe there is more and you desire come that means if you are not thirsty you can go it's all right if any man thirst let him come hunger and thirst powerful without hunger and thirst there is no appetite and there is no desire for more of god this teaching you hear me tell you tonight if you don't hunger after it will not make sense you want to listen to something else this is a teaching for people who know that there can be more this is a teaching for many people who know that lord seen you or oh, i've seen you do a lot of things but i know that there is more in you there is more in you this was the mistake of lucifer lucifer saw a dimension of god he was the custodian the librarian of heaven and by the strength of everything he saw he believed he had exhausted all there was in god and then he wanted to rise to run a parallel government with god and there was judgment in heaven and he was brought to his knees that was why when god was recreating man it surprised him because he didn't know that those possibilities were there they were not captured in the truths that were given to him reproduction multiplication through reproduction had never happened it was creation now that a man one man can meet with his wife and have a child that will own ah said something is wrong and so the angels came to meet with the daughters of men to use that strategy to create something else hunger and thirst one of my prayers a man of god every time i said lord please you know i've shared it with you here lord do not show me the extent of my impact it's my prayer and i'm saying it even as i'm preaching here just give me a token let me just see a bit of what you are using me to do and i'm grateful and i'm satisfied let me tell you if you think fame cannot influence you think again hmm. was it not the same alexander the way that went to a tailor went to a fashion designer to sew just mantle with the cap that kind of prophet chef cap he sold everything and tied his ghetto behold elijah he read the bible and said this man is me now what is this what have, what has he done that i'm not doing they first started saying you are elijah they know no all glory be to the lord but the time came they said you are elijah it's true there are things you will not believe now keep rising tomorrow they will say it and you will believe it how do you think people become jesus I don't mean image of Jesus, likeness of Jesus. Some gentlemen came here one time from Kano. Remember those that those Jesus guys and the apostles? Now I say I don't know if you are here, but they came some gentlemen immediately after service. And one of them came for altar call. As soon as they were done, I just saw the gentleman. He said he's was it Judas? One was Judas, one was Jesus, and this young man came from Kano. As soon as I saw them, I gave them a big hug. I said, Look, uh, my, my Jesus friend, let me tell you something. <laughs> You are in the image listen please i'm teaching you are in the image of christ yes are we together 
you have attained oneness with Christ based on the doctrine of the gospel yes you are in Christ one with Christ yes are we together now the Holy Spirit represents the presence of Jesus in your life yes but that you are Jesus in terms of replacement you are not like that do you think that guy got born again like that not seen people pray under a tree for many weeks and by the fifth week they left that tree mad with strange revelations from beings that were not of earth pride is a dangerous thing fame has a side effect when you begin to clap for you sometimes it becomes embarrassing to step back and let jesus be seen because spotlight is sweet oh oh mine mediocre spotlight can can bless your children's children so when the spotlight is on you you plan to be there forever so that when you shift your child too will be there when you shift your grandchild too will be there but there are times when jesus says that you decrease that you will increase and many times it is embarrassing you know i go for meetings and when i see the mighty things that god is doing or sometimes when i'm teaching and the teaching grace is really on me i see the shock and the wonder on the people and i say oh dear don't be deceived you're only watching a puppet there is one behind me may i never be ashamed to let the world know that i am nothing without him this is not just some humility creed there are many proud people who say this thing i'm saying it's very true you must get to a point in your life where you are not ashamed to stand back and tell the people it is jesus jesus ever jesus only he says and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men to myself let's get back to what we're discussing hunger and thirst there are times as a man of god come it will be embarrassing at your spiritual level to now join the flock to kneel down and cry for his a greater dimension you kneeling down for the flock can kneel down i'm kneeling down this guy is standing <laughs> are we together watch this a time a time can come huh when everybody is crying for more people are rolling on the ground and saying lord search my heart and as a man of god it's not any personality difference you would let them to the throne room and you are just standing there there's no need because you have become the throne room yourself you see deception is subtle so you will tell them to fast and you too you will not fast what is the need i mean whether i fast or not you see that if you want to be captured in every move of god same hunger that made you climb a tree like a monkey and held on to one branch and cried there and said god i will not come down from this tree except you bless me and god said come down i will show you what you want to see if that same hunger is not there now you can stay in a five-star hotel listen now you have all kinds of entourage do you know sometimes i look at my life today and i thank god for what god has done many times there are times that i wish that i had my life back in the days when nobody knew me fame can be destructive even to your spiritual life i can't go out freely i can't eat freely i can't be myself you see that I can't stroll out to just enjoy what God is doing. If someone there catches me there, instead of coming to join the line, now that I've seen him, let me just quickly. It's a very embarrassing life. It looks like fame, but it's dangerous. Time today is a luxury. You must intentionally sometimes close the door to some of this comfort and retreat back. Listen to me and say lord this is still your boy of before again oh they now call me apostle joshua selman but this is still your boy again and god says are you still as hungry as before 
He said, hungrier than before, oh God. After the miracles, yes, sir. After the fame, yes, sir. And then he says, now I will take you and show you higher things. Hunger can be discerned. And let me tell you this. If you're a man of God, please listen. Your congregation will be a reflection of your hunger. The moment you become complacent, that impartation will come on them. They will strangely find out that the grace is no longer there. Everybody say hunger. Almost 80 to 85% of the time, if you meet me, if I'm not studying, I'm listening to a message or something. There are times I just return from a ministration, right there, just entering my hotel room. You would think I should lie down and cross my leg. I started playing a message before I quickly went to go and preach. Now that I'm back, thank God for the mighty things. Sincerely, God is my witness. There are a few times that I think about a meeting and what happened. Once I leave that place, it's all right. If you ever ask me, how is the meeting? The only thing you will hear is fine. Doesn't matter what happened. The answer is fine. That's it. One of the mighty things that happened here? Fine. A few times, some of you send me pictures and clips of what happened. And I look at it. Whoa, you mean this what happened? Lord, I give you praise. Let's continue. Do you know why? Because you see, you prepared for today, yesterday. You don't prepare for tomorrow, tomorrow. You prepare for tomorrow, today. They are celebrating what you did yesterday. If you are not doing anything today, there will be nothing to celebrate tomorrow. Listen to me. You have to learn this. Those who win Olympic, as soon as they are done, they rest for a while, go on a vacation one month, and they are already preparing for the next Olympic. Champions don't rest. Champions move. Not in a competitive manner. There is more in God. Listen to me. You are not going to clap for me now because someone fell under the anointing. You may do that for your president in your small fellowship. You are not going to say glory be to God. Koinonia was powerful because someone was shaking. No. There are testimonies today that if you hear in another church, you will stand up and clap. I watch here. Somebody would give a very big testimony and coin up, up and just clap one hand and say, Is this it? Go and sit down. We want something more. And you are right. You are right. You are right. Because your capacity is being expanded. That means yesterday's food will not feed you. Give an adult a baby's food. And you say, This is for what? The baby is grateful for having it. But the adult is still hungry. Don't you know that the more you grow, the more the nourishment must be strong in size and quality. The burden of being at the cutting edge of God's move will require you to be, listen, listen, that hunger must remain in you. That hunger must remain in you. You see all the wonderful things that just happened when the, the meeting just started. I go back to God. Let me tell you something with me and God. There are a few times, and I want to be very sincere with you. God is in this place. There are a few times where God comments on any meeting that I've gone to. No. This is the realm of champions. You don't talk like mediocres. I don't come back to God and God says, Ah, son, you did a great job in that crusade. What for? No. Let's continue the training like a coach looks at an athlete you are the best in the field and after they snap you and do everything the coach is watching you not in anger he's impressed and once you come he says go and change your clothes wait for me in the field it's proof of his love you have conquered that standard and he takes you higher this is what happened to david david was so david exhausted the realm of his generation and rose up into another realm and began to see the coronation of the messiah the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand no other prophet saw that it was david that understood the excellency of the spirit the spirit was never given without measure to people please listen and now david had got it he said cast me not away from your presence take not 
other prophets were comfortable with the holy spirit going and coming david said but i've seen that a move of god will come when this grace the spirit will come and stay lord can i not enter that move hunger hunger took david to the secret place as a king the palace did not mean anything to him he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper i'd rather be an usher let me be an usher the next move than to be a lord in the former move hunger and thirst for you dry and weary land yeah. i hunger and thirst for you dry and weary land for oh. miracles in spite of the revelations i hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land yeah. sing it from your heart all i want is you lord thank you for the revelations Thank you for the miracles, for the word of knowledge, the prophetic. But Lord, I thank you for yesterday's wine. But I need the wine of today and tomorrow. I hunger and thirst. Listen, you must trust God for your secret place to have such a high standard that no matter what you are doing currently, when you get back to the secret place, you will see that it's a step out of the. If your bar is too small, pride will kill you. If your bar is too small, one successful program will kill you. That's why you see all these young guys. Listen, listen. Sometimes I talk to them and I encourage them. Don't let successful programs enter you. Don't let successful concerts enter you. Are you seeing that? There are people whose spiritual lives went down. There are people who could not pursue and seek after God again. The next move of God. Success can depreciate your pace. Because when you are motivated by a need to hit a standard, listen, it will give you an impetus. But where there is no, where there is nothing to prove again, there is no hunger. When you go for a meeting today, whether you say God bless you and leave, nobody will ever say oh he doesn't have revelation oh come on the track record is there nobody will ever say oh he cannot heal that's why he just did altar call and sat down when you are starting out in ministry the pressure to make your calling and election choice upon you so even in five minutes you want to do everything at once you want to prophesy you want to give word of knowledge you want to heal you want to share the latest revelation but as god begins to crown your 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 your, your life with undeniable graces and honor you get to a point where the pressure to rise is not there and it shows that you have plateaued it shows that you have arrived but when your hunger remains ah. when i was preparing this message i was praying for my own self i said lord my hunger should be larger than every anybody's own in this ministry otherwise how can i lead hunger i've prayed for but show me something else about prayer 
I've seen your power before but show me the one I've not seen I've seen your anointing but show me something else I have seen the spirit of revelation but show me something else I have seen angels but show me another dimension of his apostolic ministry look at a man's hunger that I may know him that I may know him Paul I hope you know the doctrine of scripture starts from the writings of Paul the acts of the apostles down to revelation the gospels do not contain doctrines no the doctrines of scripture are embedded there some of them were just shadows as presented Paul single-handedly wrote to third do you know what it means for a man to create the study curriculum of the church it was not just jesus that wrote it paul sat down and wrote to thirds the the limit of our spiritual growth is scripture that is the boundary given to us for growth and a man sat down by the spirit and wrote it yet when that man finished writing it he said that i may know him that I may know you. Oh God, that I may know you. That I may know you. I have seen your power, but that I may know you. A man of God said he went for a pastor's conference one time and Pastor E.A. Adeboye was there. And when it was time for all the men of God to pray, he said he wanted to lie down close to him. To hear what kind of prayer a man at this realm will pray and he said when he lay down all through for more than one hour all that you were saying is mercy mercy Lord mercy mercy Lord mercy the young minister there is in power power Lord result open doors oh God offering send help us that 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 small kiosk like building must be completed whereas there is a man here with kilometers as an estate and his language and his desire mercy he has learned that one of the most important things is the mercy of god are you getting what i'm telling you now hunger hunger if you're a pastor here please minimize just praying for power and cry for hunger go back and buy the same new notebooks you bought that the spirit of revelation came to honor it you have stopped buying it go and buy them again go and find a place where you used to sit alone with god i'm too busy i have counseling to do i have mentees and sons in ministry and you would die there and they will go to the next move because they are followers you are worried and obsessed about many things but one thing is needful to sit at the master's feet please listen to me the things you did that brought you to this realm go back and start creating the atmospheres for them again hear what i'm telling you this is not the issue of i'm a big man now no 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 I have my notebooks you see my notebooks i can i can gather all of them for you from the time i started working with god when i go for retreats i go with all of them all of them lord what did you say my god look at what you said i bought new ones for tomorrow i buy it like this and i show the lord i say lord see it your student is here again packs of viral i'm ready because if you are not ready to hear and listen and write he's not ready to speak the level that koinonia is right now is already exhausted there i'm already preparing and aligning for the next seasons not today the preparation of yesterday brought us to where we are today thank god for what god is doing around the world through this ministry but my brothers and my sisters is child's play and if we remain complacent clapping we will become like the old wine 
we must be at the cutting edge of God's move through hunger genuine hunger oh that we we'll have men and women of God again who will organize program for others but for yourself you organize a program with the same energy for others for yourself Next point, my time is up, my God. You want to come up higher in the spirit. You will need an encounter with the spirit of prayer and supplication. Please write it down. This is one of the dimensions where the prayer ministry is irreplaceable if it is the next level and the next move of god there is no there is nothing you will do to replace the ministry of prayer jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 please write it quickly call on to me and i will answer the revelation is an answer is a response i will answer you and i will show you great and mighty things that are not yet captured in your experience call on to me call on to me let me tell you something i've observed and I, I say this respectfully and i think it's a correction that the body of christ needs to get there are few believers who pray for edification most believers have left the ministry of edification to prayer most of our prayer is either warfare or request there's nothing wrong with warfare there's nothing wrong with request but let me tell you the dimension of the growth dimension of prayer is for edification where you don't enter the place of prayer with a prayer request where less than five percent of your prayer is in english you are not just entering to harass god you are not just entering to say lord there are powers sitting on my destiny leave destiny the goal is edification and you feel the growth you feel the stretching from your spirit man very few believers pray for edification you can know it because you stand near them they are weak as weak as whatever they love god but their capacity is weak strength is discernible is why we fall off over everything you don't get this miracle you don't get that miracle you harass god all around but there is a level of strength and stability please hear me the next move of god will come on the wings of genuine prayer thank god for miracle service don't get me wrong there is a place of supplication and all of that and there is a place of intercession for others but can i tell you this those who were here many years ago in Zaria will tell you there were few times when many people today that are greatly used by God around there were few times where people took out time to actually pray for their own request believers who gather and just are praying no prayer point no prayer request is towards the end of the prayer they'll just say Lord just to let you know we have not eaten and we trust your grace for supplies just to let you know that we have this 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 issue but the average believer right now prays but our prayer does not bring the level of growth and stamina because that prayer is largely driven by lust the need for things so i can go to pray and spend six hours there correct well done but that six hours is almost five hours of harassing God. When will the power come, oh God? Is that prayer? That's inquiry. You've not started praying. There are few believers who can, who can pray if a request is not, if a prayer point is not raised. You want them to pray, you have to raise a prayer point say this then they say so oh, i now follow and, and pray it turn it into a prayer point but when you say let's pray they just stand and say so what should we do now and other people are praying and they are just watching but when it's all right everybody stand up 
Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, my life, my life, this and that, this and that. I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. But have you learned the edification ministry of prayer? The edification ministry. To the point, it used to be a big deal to be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you were not filled with the Holy Ghost, it was as if you were naked. When believers gather by yourself, you will find one brother and say, Sorry, can you pray for me? It used to be a project. But right now, there are believers who can be in a place for many years. They know about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And they don't argue it, but they have not seen the need. They just feel, one day if it happens, let me just be filled. Capacity. Capacity. There are, set, there are certain levels of grace and anointing that is a waste to come to you. It's like pouring a drum of water inside a cup. It doesn't make any sense. You need to expand. Please tell somebody, expand, expand, expand. You don't expand by preaching. You don't expand by going for ministration. You don't expand just by, by doing Bible study for others. You don't expand by conducting deliverance for others. No. You have to lock yourself. Lock yourself. Look at Jesus. The word of God filled with the Holy Spirit. While others are sleeping. They are the ones who need him. He will get up in the morning. And pray for hours. It was a daily habit. To the point that when it was time for him to go to the cross. From the communion. The upper room. He branched Gethsemane. And prayed there. He spake a parable to the end. Prayer is an instrument that we can use to correct anomalies. I agree. But please hear me. Learn to get into the place of prayer without prayer points. The prayer point is you. The prayer point is you. Many of those things will be answered when you are answered. The prayer point is you. There are many, many requests that are a revelation of weakness. When you access strength with God, you will check and not find the prayer points again. And you are looking at time. You are not praying. You are praying. You, you pop, tom, tom. You put it. You are not praying. Five minutes, you know. Let me tell you this. God loves everybody, but he rewards seriousness. God rewards seriousness. There are pastors who are like that. Every two minutes, you are leaking something or swallowing something. There are times that you go to pray, my brothers and my sisters, you don't know whether you are on earth or you are in heaven. You don't know. It's a realm. There are many things about prayer when it's said most believers don't know because that is a progression in a realm that you must get to for that thing to make sense. We must pray. Our weaknesses are becoming very glaring. We must pray for capacity. In fact, most people never sought anointing it was a byproduct of some of these things they didn't even know that anointing was to be sought directly now all and sundry you see a lazy all around crying for benny Hinn's grace in in the secret place five minutes lord the, a, a double portion of what is on benny Hinn. let it and god is trying to say no 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 i can give you just i don't want any he, who, you know if you are god you give good gifts to those who love you and god said this is not how it works have regard for Benny Hinn, not just God. You want a double portion of his anointing and you are there five minutes snoring back. Five minutes snoring back. No. Revive your prayer life. Revive your prayer life. Revive the edification dimension of your prayer life. 
revive the edification dimension of your prayer life revive the edification dimension of your prayer life please hear me revive the edification dimension of your prayer life don't just pray needs don't just pray warfare pray to grow pray to grow that's how many of us enter the realms of visions it was not a conscious request you pray your way till you break the gates that closes this realm and the next realm prayer like a system of transport revive your prayer life say amen there are men of god who don't pray they are praying for me that's a deception is a deception from the pit of hell let me tell you this if you are a man of prayer and you are edified through prayer there is a signature that that the strength and the health of your spirit man is written upon you are we together now your communication and everything shows that there is a track record of prayer you can stand on stage and mumble tongues and people look and the, the scarceness you know that this one is just is just it's not just the huskiness of your voice there is a it, it, the deep calls on to deep people know that this one mm -mm, you have you have is like creating a hole there is a a position your leg can stand in prayer when you find a widespread congregation not praying it's because the leaders don't pray you only transfer to people out of the abundance of the grace that is on you please learn to pray don't pray when you have a meeting this is what people do when they have conferences they now organize imaginary um, um, five or seven days prayer i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but if you have to wait for a program to pray you will never be powerful in this world everybody say prayer i'll find a place to stop so that we can continue a man of god said something that blessed me i think it was dr paul enenche I heard something that he said I, I scrabbled it somewhere and it it blessed me I said boy I was going to share this I can I can I can't find it again but I think he was talking around the fact that it was it was something about prayer how that when prayer changes you then everything that belonged to the old you will have to go with the old you because you are now changed are you seeing that now yes it's like changing an house. i don't need to carry the tree that was in my former house i didn't like it so i left the house the tree goes with it when you are changed many requests change too he spoke a parable listen the church started on the wings of prayer and we must pray we must pray those listening to me please pray it doesn't matter what nation you are in pray you don't have to be the president of anything to pray right now this obsession about coordinator I'm the coordinator of a prayer group so I pray if you pray because you are a coordinator you are a hypocrite coordinate yourself behind a tree coordinate yourself behind a door and sit down and pray if there's no space in your house use your bathroom use your toilet lock up that place and pray stroll out in the night and pray you don't have to shout and harass the people there but pray if your bed is uncomfortable stand up from it stand up from it don't pray one leg is on the ground 20 or 40 percent of your body is on the bed and you are praying god knows you are weak he doesn't leave you weak he gives you strength prove that you have received it by standing up don't have to have a bad dream then you wake up and say you don't know, I will show you that I'm a member of Koinonia Shaka, ta, 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 ta. No, no 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 make deposits of that prayer so that while you are sleeping the prayer is like you praying 
there are people who are praying even when they are not praying yeah their prayer has created a prayer motion that even in their sleep prayer is going on their prayer has become a portal for angelic activities they don't have to pray for it to start call on to me call on to me call on to me Zechariah chapter 12 we'll stop here and pray we'll continue next week Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10 come up here through prayer verse 10 Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10 and it shall come to pass in that day said the Lord and I will pour upon the house of David the house of Koinonia and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourned for this and that and that and that the spirit of grace and supplication is a spirit that comes upon you to pray if you pray only because you are in prayer band you are not a prayer warrior a prayer warrior is not somebody what is who is a warrior remove prayer a warrior boxer learns every day a warrior chef cooks every day whether there's an appointment or not a warrior lecturer teaches every day a prayer warrior prays every day if a prayer warrior prays only when there are people there so that they will hear your voice you are doing exactly what the scribes were doing the scribes and the pharisees were never called prayer warriors they were called hypocrites are we together we'll take 10 minutes or so to pray come up here new dimensions in the spirit Prayer. hallelujah before we pray just cry in one minute lord thank you for what you have done at this level but baptize me with a fresh hunger a hunger that swallows up every achievement that has been wrought in God in my life. Thank you, oh God, for the people I have mentored. But a fresh hunger. Pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger. Culminating into passion. Not just passion for studying books. Not just passion for studying the Bible. Not just passion for going to church. Not just passion for serving in the house of God. Passion to pray. Not just praying and asking. Praying and growing. Praying and rising. Are you praying? Hunger, oh God, hunger, oh God, hunger, oh God, hunger, oh God, hunger, oh God. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Rakata branda skada balakato. Hunger, hunger. Challenge pride. Challenge the deceptiveness of fame. The deceptiveness of fame glory. Thank you Lord for these things you have done. But I cry for hunger. I cry for a test. To understand what you are saying next. To understand what you are doing next. Parado shalakata. Hallelujah. 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 In the next maybe five to ten minutes, I just want you to blast in tongues. You are not challenging any demon. 
you are not asking God to give you anything no tea no bread no anointing no ministry you are praying for your edification that your spirit man be built Enlarge your capacity in the spirit. Enlarge your vision in the spirit. Enlarge discernment in the spirit. Shanabash, rakata barakata te prakatelech. Sham prato zekete la karanta skaparu zeketa. Emprous ke marato shelekato zebret. Shegene gene gene bush ke prato skaparu zesia bakata. Empro na sadash kala bros ke ne bahashale mabus. Though our outward man perish, yet the inner man is renewed. Shenekantas kaparus kalabates, eprakato barus ane kapos kalabres, eprakato skele katos kamahasha, entenos kele de shana marukata. Shekete kete kete, shekata prakata lekata prakata lekata bosha lekata, emprakata teka taka 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 prakata taka lekata prakata, shenekos kabanda barus lekata lekato, empo shenes kana kata prakish, lekoti. Sekete, <laughs> Pray, believers. Pray and rise into untold dimensions. Come up here. Access to light. Come up here. Access to true power. Come up here. Access to untold dimensions of the workings of the spirit. The spirit of grace and supplication. Makata barandas kabarekus. The body, the flesh may be weak, but I tell you, the spirit is willing, willing to go to a higher dimension, willing to go to a higher face, willing to come up to a level where you will see the things that must happen. Pray young and old. Be a man of God. You don't have to be a woman of God. You don't have to be a deacon. You just need to be one hungry and passionate for another dimension. Higher than that which you have seen. Telena sana makaratos. Teleba rumse zene kali adabarash. Parada katosa la kaprende kete parash. Don't be tired. 
Karatos Katabalaka Toshalet, Empre de Katerekate Barakata, for my spirit man, on behalf of the generation committed to me, on behalf of the, the mistreated to me, Lekatarika Tosabrekato Shenekata. Salamanakata, Salamanakata, Parakato Zezem, Emprakatata Kate Balakatos, Shebros Kamahashanish, Emprakate Kate 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 Kate, Shaprokoto Parakato Zedekesia. Do not be drunk with wine wearing his excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Adabarandas kabarato shalakata pranakata Kratos kele baruta segete bash He speak a parable to the end that men ought always to pray Men ought always to pray The, the cure for spiritual laxity is prayer The cure for spiritual limitation is prayer The cure for timidity and weakness is prayer cure for weakness in ministry is prayer. The cure for spiritual weakness is prayer. The cure for aberrated dreams and visions, prayer. The cure for stale revelations, prayer. The cure for the absence of power, prayer. The cure for newness without freshness, prayer. Shalabarakata, makata braskata barakate, shakata shakata shaseta, ambrata barakata bata. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you why many worshippers don't receive songs because they don't pray. Many worshippers write songs, they wax album, but they don't pray. One of the proof of a healthy prayer life is the reception of spiritual songs let me tell you you don't have to be a musician there is a dimension of prayer that you get to you must receive melodies in the spirit you must you may forget it after the prayer but you will need it as a ladder to keep climbing I tell you why many there are stale songs in the church because many of them are composed composed by an appetite to generate revenue there are people who used to sleep with guitars and keyboards and they will lie down and play for hours 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 that's how to be a worshiper that's how to bring songs from heaven I tell you why many preachers are not fresh they quickly open their Bible and browse on YouTube and browse on the internet 
you prepare your sermon not by studying prayer creates the coordination on what to study if you sit down with a notebook and you just feel i know what to say oh i'm teaching about this no you carry your notebook you carry this when i go to bed my bible follows me my books i'm on one side my bible is there my laptop is there my phone is there everything that helps my spiritual life lies down the bed with me you don't prepare a message by going on youtube you prepare a message by going to the secret place you pray and pray and you get to a point where your spirit man begins to zoom around a central thought that the spirit is speaking you see that and that's how series upon series will come out if you if you do ministry and preach just by looking for sermons per week you will not last one month you will not have anything to say again before the time of prayer you may not even know what to share in a conference what to share in this book you just pray prayer is powerful prayer is powerful prayer is powerful we are going to pray just two minutes this is a request now you are going to say lord the grace and the stamina in the place of prayer baptize me afresh with it don't say i'm a woman no don't say i'm a man don't say i'm elderly don't say i'm a child don't say I'm a career person. Baptize me, O oh God. The grace for prayer. The interest for prayer. The unbeatable advantage of a life that can be edified through prayer. There is no limit for a man that can pray. Prayer is not everything. But as far as the dimension of a man's rising to access new lens in the spirit, no, you must pray. Harakata shana malakata, brata kete baresa katola baharata shenekata. As a preacher, the grace to pray. As a businessman, the grace to pray. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. Listen. Listen. Prayer is an amplifier of every virtue you have. Anything is amplified in prayer revelation plus prayer is higher revelation speed plus prayer is greater speed wisdom plus prayer is superior wisdom strength plus prayer is greater strength prayer amplifies everything don't stop at spiritual potentials they are there but fan them to flames the prophetic is there it will remain as a potential until prayer crushes everything and brings the wine out of it one of the ways you make your calling and your election choice by prayer pray parents teach your children to pray don't just teach your children to study teach them to pray little wonder the number one thing being fought in schools is prayer not yet study prayer let no day pass without you praying there is no reason for it don't do it as a ritual but please do it no matter how busy you are once it's six o'clock or seven or eight or nine your mind tells you breakfast 
once is 12 or one or two or three your mind says lunch once is six or seven or eight your mind says dinner indoctrinate your spirit man to be that sensitive the moment is morning you know it's like a register you need to sign listen let me tell you when we started out we never went to bed till we prayed once it was evening seven o'clock eight most believers already knew it was time to pray it didn't matter what even if there was no corporate prayer our phone and social life was in a place of prayer once it's 6 30 7 7 38 you start seeing people one by one you will see a tiny lady with her socks and her rechargeable playing one song she's smuggling herself to one corner to go and pray later you'll see that girl come out there, there were people who did this non-stop for years they didn't know they were powerful till the day they told them can you share in a little fellowship as soon as they stood their fire you don't do ministry by appointment it was while they prayed and fasted that the holy ghost says separate separate separation comes in the place of prayer it was while they prayed and fasted the holy ghost says separate one week you've not prayed you are all right three days you've not prayed you are all right two days you've not prayed it's okay no problem you know how nigeria is i will, I will pray the other time it's an attack you must trust God for grace to pray. Like I said, many of us, it's not like we're not praying. But our prayer is largely warfare and demand. Warfare and demand. So we get to the secret place with different requests. Oh God, do this. Oh God, do this. Oh God, do this. We just water it down with tongues five, ten minutes and we're done. That may not be bad. But you are not going to be mighty that way. You want to come up here you must spend time and time means hours it may not be the same capacity every day but the goal is consistency consistency let me tell you this if you pray a whole day and the next time you pray again is three weeks you will not grow did you hear what i said if you pray 10 hours one day because of a program or seven days of seven days prayer and fasting then the next time you really take out time to pray is two weeks you do it like that you will not grow the key is the constant connection constantly father we thank night we thank you because you are guiding us into your program into the place of power oh how we need your power how we need your grace a demonstration of higher dimensions of you that can crush and crumble the pride of men lord we ask that you will grant us grace to rise beyond our complacencies grant us grace to rise to higher dimensions we thank you for what you have done in our lives they call us champions but we call ourselves students hungry students desirous of more of you lord i pray that everyone tonight will receive a baptism of the grace for hunger a baptism of the grace for prayer in the name of jesus for those of us who have had our prayer lives go down and out i pray tonight let the call of the spirit rest upon your prayer life and find it back to flames in the name of jesus we thank you in jesus name i pray if jesus please keep standing you will sit down shortly keep standing everyone stand please outside inside stand you are here tonight and while i began to teach the holy ghost started speaking to you and telling you that you need jesus and you need your life to be right with you jesus said you must be born again you may be following online overflow one two three by the roadside wherever you are
right now or you need to rededicate your life to jesus and to mean it sincerely it's my joy and my honor to lead you to reconnect you to this flow of his grace his love his power wherever you are under the sound of my voice please if you're outside and you're coming then you rush i will count one to five you are in here you are a first timer you are coming you just know that you need jesus as i count one to five please leave your seat quickly and come out don't wait for anybody to be the first one let's celebrate them as they come two someone is saying i have to i have to rise up higher the first the first requirement was that i was in the spirit he said that which is spirit is spirit that which is flesh is flesh three apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not join them join them i want to come but i'm ashamed and i'm afraid of my friends I came with my colleagues win that war my brother and my sister come hallelujah if they are still coming please make make way for them to come just just direct them it's okay it's okay thank you now I salute every single one of you you have come it's a bold decision some of you are, are truly truly making this commitment for the first time and then some of you are dedicating your lives it doesn't matter what category you are in please lift your right hand high above your head and say this sincerely sincerely and truthfully you are still joining them please come quickly there's room for you to join god bless you sir you are still joining them come say lord jesus say it again lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight I declare that you are my Savior you are my Lord you are my King I receive eternal life I'm sensing a strong anointing already here I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life from today and henceforth I am a child of God I belong to Jesus forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted Lord Jesus thank you thank you for this once I declare your sins forgiven authority of God's word I declare that the grace to walk in the newness of life the grace to be spiritual is released upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ from today and hence you go from glory to glory from grace to grace from faith to faith in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen a big congratulations to all of you um, please I'd like you to follow there's a gentleman waving his hands all of you in concert this way just follow this gentleman and he will lead you to people let's honor them them, Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you